In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is and always shall be. Brothers and sisters, today is the first Sunday of the Great and Holy Fast. I congratulate you on your uh, successes uh, uh, this week in keeping the fast and in uh, maintaining a uh, atmosphere in your home that is appropriate uh, for this time of the year, for this great work which we are undertaking. Uh, as the first Sunday of Lent, we celebrate, as you know, the triumph of orthodoxy in the year 787 at the Ecumenical Council held in that year uh, and the definitive restoration of icons. And every year we speak about this uh, and it's a good thing to do so, to remind ourselves about the importance of iconography and uh, of its, its, its meaning, its significance. I thought, however, t this year I would speak about the gospel because we so seldom uh, comment on it, on this feast, because of the, the feast of the, the icons. Obviously, it takes our attention uh, away from the gospel, perhaps. But uh, it's a very intriguing gospel because uh, it involves Nathaniel uh, being recruited to become a member of the apostles. And, um, and when he is uh, engaged by Jesus and they have this discussion about Jesus having seen him before uh, Peter, uh, came, before Philip came to him. Um, Nathaniel is amazed, and he says, "My, uh, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel." And he's speaking with the expectations that a typical Israelite would have had for the Messiah someone who was going to deliver them from the political circumstance that the Israelites were in under the domination of the Romans. Uh, and uh, it's a perfectly natural kind of response, a perfectly typical kind of expectation that Nathaniel had for what a Messiah would do. But Jesus, Jesus changes the entire ten, tenor of this uh, in, encounter because he says, well, you, the things that you have seen from me, uh, you will see much greater things than that. And then he makes reference to himself with this extremely uh, cryptic and mysterious expression, the Son of Man. And he says, you will see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. It's a very, very mysterious uh, phrase which uh, harkens back uh, to the apocalyptic language that we hear in uh, the writings of the prophet Daniel, uh, in Ezekiel, in, uh, the, right, in the book of Ezra. Uh, there are many references to the Son of Man. And indeed, when Christ is being interrogated before his passion, uh, he, he identifies himself as the Son of Man who you will see coming on the clouds in power and, and dominion. Uh, and the high priest at this point tears his robes because he believes that Christ has blasphemed when in fact our Lord has simply said the truth about who he is. Describing himself with this phrase, the Son of Man, which um, without going into all of the... Uh, details about it is, a, is, a, is a, a phrase which can mean just a person, it can just mean a, 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 a man, but it also in this apocalyptic literature came to mean uh, a figure who would deliver the people from uh, their uh, bondage and domination. The, 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 the Messiah was a um, powerful uh, uh, one who would reveal, and that's what apocalyptic is all about, the revelation of the truth about mankind and about the kingdom of God. And so the Son of Man is this figure who, who, who um, brings about the, the <coughs> unveiling and the disclosure of God's plan for his creation. 
and its fulfillment. And Christ identifies himself as that. And he says, and you will see the angels of God ascending and descending. This can only mean to us that he's, explain, he's expressing the, the idea that, uh, that in his person, there would be communication, there would be exchange, there would be connection and reconnection in a sense between earth and heaven. That these two spheres, which previously were at, at odds with each other, which were estranged from each other because of, of Adam, because of the fall, because of the two fools who, who sacrificed the great union and communion that they enjoyed in the garden, the Edenic paradise, they sacrificed that for the sake of their own self-will. And so Christ is the one who is reuniting these two uh, spheres, the heavenly and the earthly, bringing them back into communication, re-establishing the relationship between them, and revealing once again uh, the uh, heavenly purpose and goal of humanity. And so, in a sense, it, Christ is recreating the, the creation because he is restoring it to its proper purpose and to its proper goal in his own person. And so St. John's Gospel begins with this really incredible encounter, which it, it, it shifts the whole tone of, of, of the Gospels. It, it, it kind of, it, 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 it refocuses the Gospels. It's not just about a man who is uh, on the shores of the, uh, the sea, uh, who is catching fish or who is healing the, 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 the lepers or, or the sick, uh, who is giving an ethical teaching, uh, as inspired as it might be. It's not like that at all. It's a completely different reality that St. John is talking about. Indeed, Christ did those things. He did heal and he did provide a profound teaching, but... He did much more than that by reestablishing this connection between the heaven and earth, reestablishing the connection between God and man by realigning the, the, the creation and placing it back in its proper context so that it would um, relate man to his creator and connect him. Uh, this, this is... Um, really a, 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 an amazing and I think it's a overlooked and missed uh, passage from scripture. And the fact that it comes at the very first Sunday of the Great and Holy Fast should tell us something as well, that precisely the fast is, is, is not just about sort of cleaning up our lives and becoming uh, more disciplined or, or nicer people. <laughs> That's that's a nice thing if it happens, but it's really not what the fast is about. Becoming who we were created to be. Of becoming, coming into union with God. And when we talk about union with God, it's very helpful uh, to remember the words of el the elder Emilia, um, uh, 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 Emilianos uh, of Simeno Petra. Uh, Emilianos uh, talks about uh, falling in love with God. And we can all think about in our lives how we, at one point or another, have had that experience of falling in love. And what is it like? But it is a, um, it's a completely uh, unique and, and very human experience, isn't it? To kind of go outside of yourself, to, to, to see someone who is so attractive to you, who is so um, compelling and for some strange reason just uh, touches you in a certain way, which is very hard uh, to talk about, right? But, and when that happens, uh, you want to spend time with that person. You, you really, you become kind of uh, crazy about that person, don't you? And, you? and you just want to be with them. Uh, it doesn't really even matter. You see um, young people who are in love and they just sort of gaze into each other's eyes 
they just are become very foolish in in a way and just sit want to sit together and and enjoy each other's company and uh, and Emilianos talks about this as as a kind of example of what it is like for us to commune with God that we fall in love with him and that we enjoy his company we just uh, we just forget about ourselves we forget about all the aspects of life and it's a good thing in a sense uh, that uh, that you know we, we that when this happens uh, we, we almost need other people uh, to take care of us because we, we could neglect things that we have to do uh, that are practical because of our preference for simply being and with God and sitting in his presence uh, but this is something that is very very much part of the Christian life and very possible for us we might imagine well that will never happen to me but but it's not it's not true uh, it's it's it, you if you are a human being if you have the cap capability uh, to love and to forgive and uh, you, then you have the capability uh, to, to be loved by God in this way uh, and uh, Emilianos talks about it uh, using this very very beautiful term perichoresis which means to kind of co in here it means two things that are sort of taking up the same place and he talks about our relationship with God as being a perichoretic one where we we both want God wants to be with us we want to be with him and we kind of almost without losing our unique identity uh, without changing in some way from being human uh, we we occupy the same space as God and he uh, is, 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 is with us within us and uh, we never lose our identity but we but the, the perichoretic experience of love of God is precisely that that we that we kind of just forget who we are momentarily uh, because of the, the beauty and the joy of his presence this is this is the goal uh, as it were of our Lenten fast uh, not so that we could lose five or ten pounds uh, but uh, but so that we can change the focus of our attention away from things that are not bad but just not necessary right now and devote our attention precisely to the union with God which for which we were created and so the gospel of St. John uh, comes to us in a, in a way as a shock because it's it's telling us you know this the gospel is precisely about restoring this relationship and entering into it uh, our Lord himself tells us that the kingdom of God is within you and so we have to go within ourselves we have to turn and search within our own hearts to find this love of God and to find this fulfillment of who it is that he created us to be amen, amen. let us say with all our souls